Hello, everybody, and welcome to Sight Substance. People lately have been saying my voice sounds a little bit deeper. Well, I upped the steroid dose, and I woke up, and I can't believe what the f No, really, this is not a video effect. Ask the editor. This is not a video effect. This is actually the effect of nitrix. You thought that I was talking about steroids, but no, this is- Oh my god, it's returning. Do you hear that? It's slowly returning back to normal. This video is all about nitrous oxide, also known as N2O, laughing gas, or my favorite one, hippie crack. Nitrous oxide has become an ever-increasing worry. A lot of people really love nitrous oxide. Exactly. Nitrous oxide, aka laughing gas. And it's no laughing matter. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why they call it laughing gas. Makes you laugh. They want to suck on them bleeding, but everybody f***ing sucks it. Well. First of all, let's start off by explaining what laughing gas is. What are balloons? I mean, not these actual balloons, but this stuff. Now, before we do explain, I need to make it crystal clear that I am making this video for safety and harm reduction. Whippets are completely legal. In fact, this is a whipped cream maker. So what you do is you take one of these, throw it in the top here, and then you would mix your cream in the base of this, and you get whipped cream. But people discovered that not only it gives you like a very interesting kind of high, it's, but it also speeds up your car. I need not. That's the same stuff. That is this stuff. See, like cream goes in here, nitrous in here, and then you squeeze this. And when there's cream in there, cream comes out. Right now it's just so let's read about the history of nitrous oxide. Humphrey Davy, another British scientist, experimented on himself and his friends with the gas. I am sure the air in heaven must be this wonder-working gas of delight, wrote poet Robert Southey after being introduced to nitrous oxide by Davy. Even though Davy noted that the gas might be used with advantage during surgical operations, no one thought to try it as a surgical anesthetic for almost 50 years. Instead, it became widely known for its entertainment value with opportunists staging public exhibitions. These took place in traveling medicine shows and carnivals. They call it Laughing gas. I provided for entertainment in society parties is good money. For a small fee, people could laugh and act silly when they breathed the intoxicating gas. Samuel Cole was one of such entrepreneurs to profit from nitrous oxide and use the money to develop and produce his pistol, the infamous Colt 45. Oh wow, I had no idea. So there you go, the history of the infamous Colt 45. He made money from laughing gas. Laughing gas to guns, that's crazy. He became intrigued when one of the volunteers, while still under the effects of the gas, injured his leg as he stumbled into some nearby benches. Wells noticed that the man was completely unaware of his injury because he was feeling no pain. He immediately thought about applying this painkiller in his work. Dr. Wells wanted to test the possibility, so he approached Colton and invited him to participate in an experiment the next day. Colton agreed and administered nitrous oxide to Wells while another local dentist extracted one of Wells' molars. Dr. Wells experienced no pain during the procedure, and the birth of nitrous oxide as a dental and medical painkiller had arrived. The story does not end happily, however. The following year, Dr. Wells demonstrated his discovery at the Harvard Medical School in Boston. A patient was anesthetized and a tooth was extracted. Unfortunately, the gas had not taken full effect and the patient screamed. The crowd booed Wells off the stage. Got your p tooth pulled out on a stage? That's wild, man. Ironically, 150 years after his premature death, his discovery would be adopted by dental practices worldwide and Wells would be honored as the discoverer of anesthesia. Wow, he discovered anesthesia. Where is nitrous oxide today? Today, nitrous oxide is routinely used alongside other anesthetic agents in operating rooms everywhere. It is also used as a mild sedative and analgesic during childbirth for emergency medical care and for dental procedures and for <laughs> hippies who love to mix it with shit like acid and watch all the pinwheels take them to another dimension. Anyway, so now you guys got the history of laughing gas. Let's talk about the legality. In most places around the world, this is completely legal. I mean, these are from Amazon. You can go on Amazon and buy drugs. People don't know that. The laughing gas, you can get them in stores. You can order giant boxes, cases of thousands of them if you really wanted to. Price ranges depending on where you live. Now let's talk about the danger. Now, they're generally safe, but there is an issue with B12. Let's look it up so I don't explain it wrong. Basically, if you take laughing gas all day every day, you will get a B12 deficiency, which could actually be fatal. Nitrous oxide induced vitamin B12 deficiency. We outline a case of a patient presenting with several neurological symptoms and found to have myelopathy secondary to vitamin B12 deficiency in the presence of prolonged recreational use of nitrous oxide. Die from B12. So a vitamin B12 deficiency, a deficiency in the production of red blood cells due to a lack of vitamin B12 can cause permanent neurological damage that can lead to death if it's untreated. Not totally safe, you hear that? Permanent neurological damage if you're doing tons of them, be careful. So basically, if you're gonna use this stuff, you need to take vitamin B12 or just 
use it sparingly because it only lasts like, I don't know, 30 seconds. It's uh, not very strong and there's two ways to administer it, which we're going to explain. There's the drug addict way and then there's the safe way. Of course, I advise everyone to do the safe way, but before we get to that, I need to make it clear that even though this is a legal substance, you know, used in the medical system, used in food, anyone can buy it, this video is not made to promote the use of it. Any substance can be dangerous depending on the intent behind it. You could just be sitting in your basement doing balloons all day. I've been there. And when it gets to that point, yeah, I would say it's dangerous on a, well, just emotional level because you can use it to run away from your problems. It's just like any drug. It's not going to be as strong as something like heroin, of course, but um, it does offer a very short, quick escape. And when mixed, which is the highlight of this video, when it's mixed, that's when its true potential really shines. But just to be clear, we are not making this to promote or glorify the use of any compound. We're making this for education, to educate you guys about the history of it. And to show you if you're going to do it, how to do so safely so you don't hurt yourself. Of course, the best form of harm reduction is always going to be abstinence, so just don't do this stuff. But if you're going to, let's at least get this taboo out of there so I can show you how to do it safe. Now, what constitute tons? Is it 20 balloons, 50 balloons, a thousand balloons in a sitting? I have no idea. Everyone's mileage will vary. Depends on your own constitution, right? So let's see here. So dosage is basically half to one full cartridge. Common people will take one to two cartridges. It lasts total one to five minutes. Onset five to 10 seconds. Yeah, it's pretty instant. Peak 15 to 30 seconds in. Offset one to five minutes. After effects 15 to 30. So what I find the after effects are is you generally feel very relaxed. Like it could be a great sleep aid. Again, don't recommend it, but if you're like in a pinch, it's probably safer than benzodiazepines. Actually, I know it's safer. And let's look at the chemistry. This is very interesting too. Nitrous oxide or dinitrogen monoxide is completely synthesized by gently heating ammonium nitrate to decompose it into nitrous oxide. Nitrous has a linear molecule structure. The central nitrogen atom double bonded to both the other nitrogen atom as well as the oxygen atom. And here's a picture of the molecule. Nitrous is used as an oxidizer in rocketry and in motor racing to increase the power power of engines. Nitrous oxide is a colorless, non-flammable gas with a slightly sweet odor and distinctive sweet taste. Now you'll know if you have good balloons, because the good ones you'll actually taste a sweet taste, the bad ones you won't. We're gonna get into why you use a balloon in a minute. Now let's talk about pharmacology. Although N2O affects quite a few receptors, its anesthetic, hallucinogen, and euphorian effects are likely caused predominantly or fully via its effects as an NMDA receptor agonist. You might remember that name from things like ketamine. They are actually both dissociative compounds. Same with stuff Stuff like PCP, these are all in the dissociative class. NMDA receptors allow for electrical signals to pass between neurons in the brain and spinal column. For the signal to pass, the receptor must be open. Dissociatives close the NMDA receptors by blocking them. The disconnection of neurons leads to loss of feeling, difficulty moving, and even the famous hole. You're not gonna K-hole on this stuff, but you can pass out, I've done it, very easily. And then if you're standing, you will fall, so you need to be seated. The pharmacological mechanism of action behind N2O in medicine is not entirely known. However, it has been shown to directly modulate a broad range of receptors, and this likely plays a significant role in many of its effects. It moderately blocks B2 subunit containing NACH channels, weakly inhibits AMPA, kinase, GABAA, RHO, and 5-HT3 receptor, and slightly potentiates GABA, GABAA, and glycine receptors. It has also been shown to activate two poor dominant K plus channels, and some people speculate that it actually has some effect on the opioid receptors. Not proven, but some people do think that because they found when they were in their withdrawals, say of heroin, this temporarily alleviated a withdrawal symptom for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. Now that we've got all the data out of the way, let's explain basically how people take this. So the reason why you use a balloon and this is a legit whipped cream dispenser. You can actually get things called crackers. They're very little and they're designed just for doing this, but I like doing it this way. And the reason you use the balloon is because this is compressed gas and it's cold. You'll notice as soon as you do it, here, I'll show you. And this one's not gonna be cold. You have to pull it out right away. That's what she said. So watch this. You'll be able to see how cold it is. Okay, gotta be fast. Ooh, lost some there. See it smoking? Whoa, look at that. And it burned me. That is, ooh, it's ice. Look at that. Wow. Put it near my face because I'm very hot right now down here. Holy crap. So you use the balloon because if you were to say, just do that and then put this to your mouth, this is the harm reduction part of the video and suck in. What do you think that's going to do to your lungs? You think that's going to be comfortable? Now, I don't think your lungs have feeling receptors, but you don't want to damage them with fucking freezing cold gas. So yeah, this is why you do it this way. And now we're going to explain the effects on their own. Now on their own, and what it really feels like is you get uh, a buzzing in your ears, you hear a bzzz, 
noise, noise, you start seeing these slight pinwheels. With higher doses, the pinwheels get more predominant and uh, they spin all around and you feel a little wonky. Some people giggle, I don't giggle. And you feel like a slight mood boost, like all of a sudden you just feel a little bit better, more comfortable. If you're going through some trauma, all of a sudden it lessens and you're like, oh, this is easier to handle. It makes life just a little bit easier to handle. But by no means is this a very intense drug and it's very short lived. That's why people just do them one after the other after the other because the effects, when you get a tolerance, it feels like 30 seconds to a minute. The tolerance makes it last nilch. It's just like so short. And if you're after just some relief, you got to just keep doing them. So it's pretty freaking time consuming. But where it shines actually is when mixed. So depending on the compound you mix it with, I call it, psych it's like psychedelic tofu because tofu doesn't have a flavor until you add the spices to it. So the, the drugs or the psychedelics are like the spices. Now on something like LSD, I have a lot of experience mixing those. Again, don't advise this. The pinwheels that you see, they start to zoom out almost and your body, I've, I've watched like, like picture like I'm stretching really high, like um, picture like a black hole where the body's like stretching unusually like into it. Like all of a sudden he becomes like 200 feet tall and he's like, you know, it's just that image of someone stretching. I can see that. I can see my whole body stretching up into what looks like a point on the horizon. And then as my body's stretching, it starts spinning and twirling into its own pinwheel and I get like sucked out. On acid doing this feels like a very light version of DMT. It's like DMT light because you get sucked out of your body, but the difference is you're not going to a new dimension. It's almost like you're just in some kind of a void. And then in that space, this again, this is mixing with a good dose of acid. When I'm sucked out, I'm always in a loop. So whatever the last thing that I saw was, it just loops. So if it was somebody saying to me like, oh my God, that's crazy. I would just hear, oh my God, that's oh crazy. God, oh my that's God. And crazy. it would be like a loop, that's but it would crazy. sometimes be that's like, it, it's God. pitch black by the way, when you're in this and that's it just keeps like repeating and repeating and you have no control over this repetitive feeling. And it can feel more than just an audio. It can feel like you're actually reliving that experience over and over and over again to the point where you get scared and you're like, oh my God, when is this going to end? It's like an infinite loop. And when you're in it, it feels infinite. And then when you come back, I've come back and I've been like, oh my God, that was terrifying. I'm never freaking doing that again. Now, I've also mixed it with DMT, which most people will never do, and it's probably not advised. And it felt like it was relocating my consciousness. Now, keep in mind, this isn't on breakthrough doses, just on like average, maybe threshold, maybe go in the waiting room doses. It felt like my consciousness was getting transferred to different parts of the room. Like I was Spider-Man almost, like I was in the corner of the room looking back at my body. And then before I could tell like, oh my God, I'd like become a cup. That's what it did. I became inanimate objects. Now on things like MDMA, which most people have their experience mixing it. The first time I did it, it felt like I was going up, up, you know, at a roller coaster and then woo down. It was a roller coaster feeling. Really, it just accentuates whatever euphoria or pleasure you're feeling on things like MDMA. Now, some people are crazy and they mix dissociatives with dissociatives. They do it with ketamine, which um, I can't really speak on. I've tried that once in the past and I just don't remember. So leave your replies below on what that was like. I've also tried it on several research chemicals. It's generally going to be one of these things. I have not tried it on, no, I've tried it on mushrooms. I think mushrooms was actually very similar to LSD. But anyway, now that we've got the effects out of the way, let's show how people, you know, how you're supposed to do it. And unfortunately, okay, there's fucking two in here. That's way too much. This is huge. They're usually half this size. Unfortunately, we can't show any consumption, even of a legal whipped cream thing on YouTube. So if you want to see that scene, you have to join our Patreon. We're just going to skip past that. Anyway, now that we have done the effects portion, yeah, now you guys know all about the safety of nitrous, you know, about the history of nitrous, you know, about the V12 deficiency, you know, about everything. Now you guys got all the points. So that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave it with a big thumbs up. And again, if you want to see the uncut version, head on over to our Patreon page, head on over to psychsubstance.shop to pick up your very own hooded trip blanket. These things, we've been waiting for ages for the white ones and they should be delivered soon. So if you ordered a white one, it's coming soon. Um, yeah, these are super soft, made by Trippers for Trippers. We got the pockets. This is to wear on you. Wear, wear while you are having a super intense psychedelic trip. So head on over to psychsubstance.shop to pick one of those up. And yeah, leave a comment for the algorithm and let me know if you enjoyed this video. I will see you guys all in the next one. Cheers.